Hi, my name is Greg, and I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> no hi, Gregs? <laughs> Thanks, there you go. I'm also a gay man living with HIV. I'm a son, a friend, a cousin, a nephew, an uncle, even a great uncle, oh my god. I'm a diver, I'm an Olympian, I'm an actor, I'm a speaker, I'm a dog trainer, but most importantly, I'm a person. No labels can truly define the essence of a person. Many people ask what is the accomplishment that I am most proud of. And a lot of people expect, you know, the 47 national titles, the five world championship titles, a uh, silver medal at the age of 16 at my first Olympic Games, uh, four Olympic gold medals, uh, from the 1984, two, two golds in 84, two golds in 88 in diving. But truly, my biggest accomplishment uh, has to be my book, Breaking the Surface. I was diagnosed with HIV in 1988, in February of 1988, prior to the Olympic Games. In 1988, I thought it was a death sentence. I think we all did at that time. So my view was if I was HIV positive, then I was going to do the honorable thing and go home, lock myself in my house, and wait to die. But my doctor and my coach encouraged me to, to continue training, and we were able to be successful at the 1988 Olympic Games. Um, while I was once I was uh, diagnosed, they wanted to treat me very aggressively, so they put me on AZT right away. I didn't know what that meant. I had nobody to talk to because I had so many secrets. And that was uh, when I told my co-author, Eric Marcus, that uh, asked, he asked me if I was on any treatment prior to the Olympic Games for my HIV, and I said, oh yeah, they put me on AZT. And um, he just started sobbing. And then when he got control of himself, I asked him, well, why did you react that way? And I just thought it was a pain in the ass because he had to take it every, t every four hours around the clock. You know, I had a little watch that went off every four hours in the middle of the night, in the middle of the morning. I had to take my AZT, and I was reminded that I had a compromised immune system. But he said, no, you don't understand the accomplishment that, that you achieved. Um, not many people tolerated AZT very well at that time, if they tolerated it at, at, it at all. And he said that you won two Olympic gold medals. And so that was kind of the first kind of coming out that, that I had to be able to talk to somebody. I had so many secrets and to be able to share that with somebody. And that's what Breaking the Surface did, with, did for me. I, I, I said that I felt like I was on an island with barely a phone for communication to the outside world because secrets isolate you. And it was so liberating you know, once the, the book was published 15 years ago. And when I was on book tour, I went to a book signing in South Florida, and I had a five-year-old boy come up to me. He forced his parents to bring him to my book signing. You know, and there were 3,000 people there, and he was the last one in line. And he handed me a rock, and he said, Mr. Luganis, I hope you feel better. Um, the book tour was very emotional. In Northern California, I had a young girl come up to me and say, Mr. Leganis, I'm sorry they called you names when you were growing up. And when I hear somebody else call somebody else a name, I'm going to stop them. And I thought, well, where were you when I was 12? <laughs> you know? Um, there's something that I want to share with you. And um, this is something that I received just recently. Uh, February 21, 2010, 9.43 p.m. Quote, 
I owe you a huge thank you for coming to Salem, Oregon a long time ago. It was a book signing at Borders Bookstore. I was the first one in line and you were so nice to me and actually signed my framed photo of you and Ryan Luke and you drew a, you drew a picture of a paw and told me to believe in myself, your usual note. I wasn't expecting you to draw a picture and sign for your, your great day in Ryan Luke as well. I decided to continue living and not ending my life that night. I came out to my family the next day. I was in the darkest time of my life when I met you. I had been to hell and back and wanted to be done with life. You inspired me to live and to believe in myself. Thank you for my, thank you for my life. You don't need to respond, just thank you. Juan Lopez. The other thing that I am is a statistic. Being diagnosed over 22 years ago, I've run the gamut of treatments from AZT and through all these studies and the protease inhibitors, IL-2 treatments, you name it, I've been on it. I became really frustrated, and I, I know that a lot of you understand this, um, that we had a really difficult time when the protease inhibitors first came out with compliance because some of the side effects were so severe. Um, I battled depression at that time, and so I stopped taking my meds for a year and a half because I was so frustrated because anywhere I went, I had to be near a bathroom. My viral load soared over a, mil over a million, and my T-cell count was in the teens. I found a doctor who was also diagnosed around the same time and has been through many of the same studies that I had been through. Compliance for many HIV patients was a huge challenge. But thanks to you, all of you here today, you listened. And now my regimen is very manageable. I take my meds in the, in the morning and in the evening and the rest of the time I go about the business of living. Thanks a lot for listening. My T cell count now to date is over 300, and my viral load is undetectable. In large part is who we're recognizing here and honoring today with the Discoverers Award, and that's Pfizer and Cells, cells Entry, which is a part of my therapy. That, as well as keeping active, I go to the gym, I spin, I do yoga, I compete in dog agility. Uh, so I have to run around with the dogs and try and keep up with them, which is, can be challenging at times. But I just want to thank you for your hard work and thank you for listening. And also, thank you for my life. I hope my personal journey helps to inspire all of you to rededicate yourselves. My goal in, in life is to make a difference. I think that's any human being's goal, is to make a difference. And that's what you're doing, every, each and every one of you here today. You're making a difference. And I just want to thank you. We have a lot of work, a lot more work to do. But today, I want to celebrate Sills Entry and their team. And for a more opportunist, opportunistic future. And I really appreciate you inviting me here and having the opportunity to say a very personal thank you.